good morning on last kind of big adventure day. Um, the sun has decided to come out for me, which is really exciting. Um, I'm wearing shorts. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know what the angle looks like, but I'm um, super excited. Um, and I'm gonna go catch the bus and take it down to, I think it's called like Stennis or Stannis or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sure the bus driver will look at me confused. I'll show him how it's spelled and he'll be like, okay, cool. Um, and then I'm going to hike probably about nine miles, maybe more, um, from there to this place called Saltmar, I think, um, along the coast. So it's that same kind of coastal path that I was on a couple of days ago, but just further north. Um, so that is the plan for today is big, long hike. Um, my last like good one of this trip and I'm excited. So hopefully the weather continues to be this positive and um, I'll keep you updated. continues. Um, the bus broke down. Uh, apparently it was overheating and they're out of water in the system. So uh, I'm just going to wait for the next one. Um, we were running about 10 minutes late, so it's about 20 minutes away. Um, but, you know, just keeping things interesting for y'all. Okay, I've made it to the main road part of Staves. Staves? That's how you pronounce it, apparently. Um, got on the bus that was right after the one that broke down and I'm walking down to what's supposed to be the cute part of town like you go down into this kind of down the um, this big hill and you go to like the part of old town that's supposed to be really pretty um, so the walk I'm doing is actually a pretty well known one in this area between Saltburn and Staves um, usually people start at Saltburn walk south um, but for a few reasons including which um, this is a coastal walk which means the terrain is going to be a little bit slanted and I want my bad hip which is my right hip to be like on the down part of the slant so it's not being like pushed up awkwardly um, so it's better for me to walk from south to north I know that's very complex <laughs> but um, things I have to think about with my bum hip so um, that's what I'm doing walking down to like the cute part or supposedly good part I'm gonna walk around a little bit and then I'm gonna start the hike back down to Saltburn, or up to Saltburn, I should say. Apparently I get to do a little bit more of the Cleveland Way. And that Old Town stays. Very cute. Oh, and in other news, in case you haven't heard, um, the uh, English team uh, won the Euro, the Women's Euro. So good job to them. Um, and everybody's very excited about it which is cool because, you know, women's sports, everyone doesn't always get excited about. Look how shiny these rocks are. Definitely can see them on a sunny day little preview for the day. I'm gonna go climb up there. I'm gonna walk along this coastline, probably past the point where it disappears. You might be able to see in the very far distance a little bit of like civilization. I think that might be where I'm going to go. We'll see. And I'm off to do more of coastal trail. Look, more low tide stepping stones. It's not part of my path today. This giant hill is. See, this is the reason I decided to do the walk this direction. Another reason. I would have had to go down and up these giant hills after walking nine miles. Now I'm doing it at the starter instead. It seems smart. There's all these blue signs around here saying like on this site, this happened at this date. This one is kind of making fun of those and it's amazing. This is the perfect weather for walking, except for the little bugs. But other than that, it's great. <laughs> One thing about cliff walks is that sometimes the cliff falls. So you can kind of see it over there where the path just ends. Apparently they had to 
recreate the path over here. And I wonder if that happened any further because this first little bit is a little bit more inland. It's not right on the coast. So I'm guessing that this is because of erosion. So something you always just have to be aware about. That giant sea cave. So I've passed this factory thing a few times. I'm not sure what it is, but it smells similar to the paper factory or whatever that factory is between Walla Walla and Tri Cities. It's not a pleasant scent. So I just came across this thing here, and it basically tells you that that's something called a potash mine, or it was. Um, basically, like minerals for fertilizer is what they mine for now um, but this is like a little tribute to the miners essentially is what this little bench is the more you know And that purplish bit over there, that's the Great Moor. So that's why this place is called the North York Moors for that the biggest moor, I think, in England. Well, here we are approaching, I think it's Skin and Grove. Um, which is the halfway point on my walk today. So I think I'm gonna try, I, the path forces me to go down into that dip anyway, so I think I'm gonna try and find a place with fewer bugs and eat some lunch down there. Salt burn is where I'm ending, four more miles. I just have to climb up there. So I just sat down for lunch on the beach here and look. In the rock. Isn't that cool? They're little shells. So there's apparently two ways to get back up on that cliff. There's this staircase, which seems kind of overgrown, and I'm guessing most people don't choose that. But on the other side of this, you can see there's a little cut in there. The cement is. You can walk along squishy sand and then find a staircase that looks pretty much like this. I've decided to skip the squishy sand for obvious reasons. I think this is a coal burning lantern that's up on this headland. Kind of cool. So apparently the cost of skipping the squishy sand is an up down. I went up, now I have to go down that extra bit for no reason. It's exciting. But I skipped all that squishy sand. So there's that. In other news, did a full 180. It was coming from like that direction, now it's blowing in from this direction. Like it was coming this way, and now it's going that way. Whatever. Maybe fingers crossed it'll keep away the little bugs. Y'all, you know, I thought I was gonna have to go down to that dip. Appears there's another route that you can take across that field, which basically maintains your current elevation. Well, not quite, but it, it splits the difference in half. Totally. Okay. The thing I don't quite understand about English expressions that if anybody knows, please enlighten me. But instead of saying like, I don't even know what it's in place of, but I get asked if I'm all right a lot. Like, what does that mean? Is that like high? Like, I don't know. Do I respond? Yes, I'm fine. How are you? Like, like, I don't know. I don't know what it means. And, and it's like I just passed another hiker and I said hi. And instead of saying hi back or like good afternoon or whatever, he said y'all right. <laughs> like what, what does that mean? Okay, two cents about my directional choices. The incline, decline, totally I picked the right choice. Like the right direction going from south to north. But in terms of view, north to south definitely has better views because it kind of like cut, cuts out as you go down, so it's easier to see stuff like that. Not that what I'm seeing isn't pretty, but a lot of times I stop and turn around and it's what I'd rather look at behind me. So 
you know, things to consider. I don't regret my choices. My hip doesn't regret my choices. Um, just context. So when I say the places I'm staying are kind of industrial, this is what I mean. So that I think is Middleborough, where I almost stayed. And then that, I think it's Red Car, where I am staying. And compared to the rest of this area, which looks more like this, see what I mean? So apparently this was an old Roman signal station back in the day, right in this spot. That's kind of cool. There it is, my first view of Solmar. Almost there, just have to walk down. I'm ready to be done. Ready to maybe put my feet in. And I made it to the other side of that sign. Old Saltburn, right down there. I made it, I'm on the beach. So funny thing is, is that the tide is way out there, but in like three hours from now, it'll be up there where those stones are. So the tide goes in and comes out real quick here. Um, I think I've hit the like four hours where it's out a lot. Um, so it's just three, it's 2.54. I got to stays at, I think about 10.15. And then I walked down. I didn't actually get started on the walk until just before 11. So this is four hours and I did probably about 10 miles. I mean, granted it's only 1,164 feet of elevation gain, but like, I feel proud of that. I feel like that's an accomplishment. So that's a good way to end my walking holiday this year. Um, fingers crossed, next year I can do the portion of the Southwest Coast Path down in Southwest England and Cornwall, what I wanted to do this year, what I wanted to do in 2020. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Um, otherwise, um, I'll be back on if I do anything else exciting. Otherwise, this is your video for the day. Thanks for watching. See you later. So I found something interesting. They have a funicular. Tram ring. Okay, ice cream view, important. Um, it is banana, but like fresh banana, so it tastes like banana and not like weird syrup. And hazelnut chalk, hazelnut cream, but it's basically Nutella. Both of them are excellent. I would say this is probably up there and some of the best ice cream I've had on this trip. Not the best ice cream I've had in the UK or in Europe, but on this trip, definitely. Good job.